I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And this week, we actually have a show. <laughs> Last week, we didn't have a show because, as you saw by the video that I posted, eh, <laughs> I didn't feel like fooling with it. <laughs> and I had a lot of other things going on, too. Like, for instance, creating a new PC for the Game Master. Actually, it took two tries because his video card wasn't quite, quite what we were after. And so the second one is behaving itself, which is a good thing. Yes. Anyway, he's apparently quite pleased with the way it's behaving now. He can see little things floating in the air, little leaves floating in the air. And I gotta admit, it was a lot of money to spend to see f leaves floating through the air, but anyway... That's the nature of video gaming. Yes. Anyway, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. We are also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Yes. And we're also very proud of that. Now, I said last week the show was delayed, and I posted a video taken using my phone. Where's my phone? There he is. My phone, yes, which actually was kind of cool and geeky, even though it was basically me admitting that I was just too sorry to try to do a program. Oh, well, at least you know the nature of things. <laughs> so, this week, though, we actually have stuff, and I like having stuff to talk about. Otherwise, I just sit here and stare at the camera and go, which is no fun at all, for you are for me. Or Fred, even. Fred, of course, is my imaginary friend. Say hi, Fred. <sighs> he never gets tired of doing that. <laughs> I don't know why. Just to annoy me. I thought so. <sighs> anyway, Fred is my imaginary friend. He keeps me quasi-straight. Yes, I know. It's a little too much to ask of anyone. But anyway. <laughs> we have stuff, as I said, and the stuff begins with a post that I did on October the 28th about Marty McFly's hoverboard. Now you might say, Dr. Bill, what about Marty McFly's hoverboard? I mean, it's cool and all that. Well, anyway, there's a guy who is working on building one, a real version of the hoverboard. Now, it's, it's a first pass, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a first cut. Give him a break. You know, it won't it won't float over water yet, you know, a few inches off the water surface, no. But it will float over metal, which is cool, and it has a battery built into it. So it's actually a self-contained unit. You don't have, like, this cable following you around. That would be bad. So it's a cool idea. And he's got, like, a Kickstarter-type project to help fund it. So good on him. A hoverboard. I don't think I'd want to try a hoverboard. I might fall and, you know, knock a knot on my noggin. A knot on my noggin. <laughs> Hard to say. Anyway. Now, this is a little, this is an interesting story. <laughs> you see, I recently got a device that I'm going to do a, a demo of. It's called the Netgear Prime TV. The Neo Prime TV. And it's a cool little device. And the reason I got it is so I could do Google television, Google TV stuff. And it was a really good deal. It's like a $159 device, and I got it for $24.95 on sale with a coupon. You know, you have to turn in the rebate. So I turned in the rebate, they're going to send me some more money back. And when they do, it'll be like $24.95 or whatever total cost, which is cool. The very same week that I got in the device and was playing with it and was quite pleased, what happens? <laughs> Google publishes <clears throat> a Google Play 
app for the Roku, which essentially gives you all of the Google TV-ness almost on the Roku device. Now, I don't understand because they're pretty much in direct competition with Roku. Why would they put Google TV-ness on a Roku? I don't know, but it's okay because it's there, which is cool. The latest app making its debut on the Roku Channel Store is the Google Play Movies and TV. Now, this was on October 31st. This is when they posted it. And um, it's interesting because Google is currently in the middle of a big promotional push for its own Android TV operating system, which, you know, the Neo Netgear uses, which is cool. And I'll have a demo of that at some point. We'll be talking about that again. But it's just kind of odd. The timing there was a little odd for me. Anyway, next item, HP's 3D printer. Or is it a replicator? Yes. You really need to see this video. The video I have posted on the blog. And you will need to go to drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there on the screen, and check out the HD HP 3D printer. Whoa, that's hard to deal with. HD 3D printer. <laughs> wow. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It's the first... 3D printer I've seen that prints in color <laughs> instead of monochrome, which is pretty cool. And it makes it more like a real replicator. So we're getting very close to having real replicators, which is pretty doggone cool. Whoa! Whoa, Fred there is reminding us of the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is Unison. 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Unison, I think. File Synchronizer. It's a fancy way of saying it's kind of a backup program. And it's for both Linux and Windows. Unison. Okay, I kind of get it. Anyway, Unison is a file synchronization tool for Unix, Linux, and Windows. It allows two replicas of a collection of files and directories to be stored on different hosts or different disks on the same host, modified separately, and then brought up to date by propagating the changes in each replica to the other. Pretty cool. You can basically use it like a like a backup program to back up files that you don't want to lose to some other the some other place. <laughs> yes. It is different in several points from other software, and they include... It runs on both Windows and many flavors of Unix, Solaris, Linux, OS X, which would be Mac. Yes. Uh, etc. systems. However, Unison works across platforms, allowing you to synchronize a Windows laptop with a Unix server, for example. Which is pretty cool. You know, you have one flavor of device over here, you have another flavor of device over there, and you can synchronize across. Pretty neat. Uh, unlike simple mirroring of backup utilities, Unison can deal with updates on both replicas of a distributed directory structure. Updates that do not conflict are propagated automatically. Conflicting updates are detected and displayed like, what do you want to do with this? So you'll get the idea. It's pretty cool. Very, very nice. Next item. We're celebrating the 10th birthday of Ubuntu Linux. Now, keep in mind, we're not celebrating the birthday of Linux, because it's been around a lot longer, but Ubuntu Linux, the distribution, is 10 years old. A major milestone anniversary this week for Ubuntu Linux. This was posted on November 1st. It is the third most popular operating system behind Windows and Mac OS X. Ubuntu Linux itself is the third most popular. Now, I'm not saying that Linux is the third most popular totally with all the distributions but ubuntu itself that's very impressive you gotta admit pretty cool so what a difference a decade makes it says here from opensource.com as scott gilbertson writes in ars technica ubuntu drive on the the scene with little fanfare however there are 25 million ubuntu users worldwide that makes ubuntu the world's third most popular pc operating system according to Gilbertson. That's, that's cool. That's impressive. Now, I will say this. This next item, 
I, you know, I don't want to be seen to be making fun of this at all whatsoever. So let me get my, <clears throat> my serious face on. Uh, that is that we had several serious issues this week in the uh, private space industry, spacecraft. We had one spacecraft that crashed, and fortunately there were no people on board. It was totally automated, and they had an issue. It crashed. It was supposed to resupply the uh, International Space Station, and uh, not a good deal, not a good thing to happen. But then an even worse thing occurred with uh, the Spaceship 2, you remember Spaceship 1, which Richard Branson and his uh, Virgin Galactic uh, company built and flew. They now have Spaceship 2, and they've been testing it. And unfortunately, one of the pilots of that test flight was killed in this particular incident. A uh, major setback, a major uh, news item this week, and uh, it was a very sad thing. And, you know, we uh, hats off, as they say, to the, uh, the crew and the, the brave men who were testing there. One was injured, one was killed. Uh, very serious setback to the private spacecraft industry. But they all say that they are uh, going to, you know, keep going, uh, keep developing spacecraft to spaceship to. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I got to give it to them for continuing to develop the technology. It, it really hit their um, their financial shares on the stock market very hard, uh, particularly the one that crashed that was trying to, you know, re-supply re, uh, the space station. Uh, it's really kind of wild to think about uh, that, you know, we're talking about private spacecraft and the problems that they've been having this past week with that. Who'd have thought we'd be in a situation now where the government essentially was no longer having any space travel of any any nature, you know, at all? I mean, the shuttle program is gone, and it hasn't been a replacement yet, and so forth. They're working on one, but it's not there yet. And so, private space craft uh, are, is what NASA is hiring and using to do some of these tests and some of these programs. So, pretty amazing situation we're in, and you feel like you know you're living in the future. <laughs> because of some of these things. It's pretty weird. At any rate, last item of the week, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, you know who he is. He plays Sherlock. Sherlock Holmes on the program Sherlock from the BBC. Awesome in that. He also was Khan. Khan. In uh, the, the last Star Trek movie. With Khan. I always remember we haven't shut there. Khan! <laughs> anyway, so he was Khan in that movie, and he's been doing lots of things. Well, now, rumor has it, or actually a little more than rumor, strong rumor that's nearly confirmed as far as I know, is that he will be Doctor Strange in the Marvel Universe. Now, I gotta admit, he makes a good Doctor Strange. You know, I mean, he has the look, he's mysterious. He's British. I mean, hey, he's British. <laughs> he has the voice, the official sounding voice that, you know, could be, you could hear him being Doctor Strange. Dude. As long as he doesn't have to pronounce penguin, we're all right. <laughs> yeah, look it up on YouTube. Put in Benedict Cumberbatch speak, pronouncing penguin <laughs> and watch the bit from the Graham Norton show where he's trying to say penguin. He says penguins. <laughs> it's, it's silly. But he finally learns how to pronounce penguin. Good deal. Anyway, without official voice, penguins. <laughs> it just, it's just not right. Anyway, go check that out on YouTube. It's funny. But they're saying that he has been tapped to play Doctor Strange. I think that will be very interesting. Now, what was interesting to me was that the Twitterverse went nuts. First with people going, dude, yes, yes, yes. And other people going, wait, no, no. He's done too many things. He's too popular. What? <laughs> what? What kind of criticism is that? Other people were saying he needs to, Dr. Strange needs to be played by a person of color. Okay, that's fine, but Dr. Strange in the comics wasn't. 
And I, some, I know some people are going to say, yeah, well, Nick Fury wasn't either, but, you know, now he's played by uh, Samuel Jackson. So, and, and I got to admit, dude, he's a great Nick Fury, all right? No problem there. But Doctor Strange, I mean, Doctor Strange... He's Doctor Strange, you know what I'm saying? He's always looked the same way, and Benedict Cumberbatch, he actually looks like him. So, I don't get it. You know, why try to retcon everything to where people are all different, you know, colors of people? I mean, there's plenty of people out there like the Black Panther, who's from Africa. And he's, I mean, can you imagine somebody saying, I know, let's make the Black Panther a white guy. What? That makes no sense. Well, he should be... The Black Panther should be the Black Panther. And Doctor Strange should be Doctor Strange. Okay? Now, I understand about Nick Fury because Samuel L. Jackson or whatever, he, he wanted to be Nick Fury. He asked to be Nick Fury. He really loved the idea of being Nick Fury. And they drew him that way in the comic books. And then later he had the opportunity to play the one that they converted him to in the comic books. And it's awesome. No problem. But come on, folks. Enough with the political correctness. Some people are saying we need more women superheroes. Well, we got Wonder Woman. We got Captain Marvel. We got all these others. They're coming with movies of their own. Give us time. <laughs> anyway, I think people are just all bent out of shape over nothing. Just my opinion. I don't have any problem with anybody being whatever race they happen to be or gender they happen to be or whatever. But... Just be who you are. <laughs> anyway, I mean, look at me. I'm an old fuzzy dude. <laughs> Am I going to suddenly no longer be an old fuzzy dude? I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, Benedict Cumberbatch, Batch, Bat, Botch, Batch? <laughs> As Doctor Strange. And you're saying, boy, this is a strange show. Yes, it is. And that's about it for this week. Remember, until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.